All right, so let's go ahead and continue our discussion on enzyme kinetics. So now we're gonna be looking at the different types of enzyme inhibitors. And do you happen to recall how many types of enzyme inhibitors there are? I think four. So people often say four, but as we're gonna see, it's actually only three types of enzyme inhibitors. And we'll okay. see what the fourth one really is soon. So let's we'll start off with the easiest one, the competitive inhibitor. So by its name, it means it competes directly with the substrate to get to the enzyme. So if you add the inhibitor to the solution, it can bind to the enzyme to form this enzyme inhibitor complex, which the problem with this, of course, is that it can't react. And that's not what we want because what we want to happen is the enzyme to bind to the substrate to form to the enzyme substrate complex and then react to form our enzyme and the product. Gotcha. So in this case, do you happen to recall the competitive inhibitor? Where on the enzyme does it bind? I think the active site. That's correct. So if they're competing directly to bind to the enzyme, that means the substrate inhibitor have to bind to the same site. And the substrate we know binds to the site of catalytic activity, also called the active site. Okay. So if we think about what we have here, when you add the inhibitor to the solution, is it now easier or harder for the enzyme to bind to the substrate? Probably harder. Mm -hmm. Harder to bind to the substrate. So would you say that the enzyme now has a greater or lower affinity for the substrate? A lower affinity for the substrate. That's correct. And one important relation to keep in mind for the MCAT for KM is to recall that KM is inversely related to the affinity of the enzyme for the substrate. So okay. based on what we just discussed then, does that mean the KM is going to increase or decrease with a competitive inhibitor? It's going to increase. That's correct, the decrease in affinity. And the next thing we can talk about is Vmax. So Vmax is based off the michaelis mentin saturation curve, which you know on a diagram looks something like this, where as you increase the substrate concentration, the reaction velocity increases, but you can also see that it has this maximum value where it starts to top off. So that's what we call the Vmax, the maximum reaction velocity. And we also recall by definition that the Km is the substrate concentration necessary to reach one half of that maximum reaction velocity. So okay. when we look at the Vmax, we're basically just asking ourselves at extremely high substrate concentrations, what happens to the reaction velocity? So here, when we add the inhibitor, the competitive inhibitor, what do you think happens to the Vmax? Probably decreases. Mm -hmm. So we often think it decreases, but one thing we wanna keep in mind is just think, well, if I increase the substrate concentration a whole bunch, how does that affect these reactions? So from what you recall from general chemistry, if I increase the concentration of the substrate, by Les Chatelier's principle, is this reaction going to shift to the left or shift to the right? It'll shift to the right. That's correct. And if I do that, I'm going to form a whole bunch of this enzyme substrate complex, and I'm going to deplete my supply of enzyme. So if I no longer have any enzyme left, is my inhibitor able to bind to anything? No. No. So in that case, is our inhibitor still affecting the reaction rate? Nope. No, so in this case, the Vmax actually stays the same. And another way this is often explained is that since they're competing for the same site, if you've got 10 substrate molecules, 10 inhibitor molecules, then it's like 50-50, which one the enzyme binds to. But if you've got a billion substrates and only 10 inhibitors, then you're really never going to have the enzyme get to the inhibitor because it's just uh, covered with substrates. Okay? Gotcha. Mm -hmm. All right, so I do want to draw what this curve looks like with an inhibitor, that the solid line was uh, without an inhibitor. So we can look at, let's say, in a dashed line, what it does look like with an inhibitor. And what we're going to see is that with an inhibitor, it looks like this. So you can see that it has the same Vmax, but if you want to look at the Km with the inhibitor, we can see indeed the value is increased, uh, as we discussed. Does that make sense so far? Yeah, definitely. Okay, so now let's take a look at the next type of inhibitor, which is the uncompetitive inhibitor. 
Now, the competitive inhibitor competes directly with the substrate to bind to the enzyme. By uncompetitive, that means there is no competition here. And as okay. it turns out, the inhibitor doesn't even bind to the enzyme itself. It binds to the enzyme substrate complex. But it creates a similar issue that once you form this enzyme substrate complex, you can't react. So in this case, the inhibitor, does it bind to the active site? It does not. Nope, and it certainly can't if it can't bind to the enzyme directly. So right. where does the enzyme bind then? Something else that's not the active site. I think allosteric site. Yes, you're absolutely correct. Sure. Yeah. Allosteric okay. site. And the allosteric site is very loosely defined as literally anywhere on the enzyme except the active site. So that's yeah. absolutely correct. So in this case, if you look at the reaction, it, when we add the inhibitor, are we affecting the ability of the enzyme to bind to the substrate? No. No. So what do you think is happening to the CAM, the affinity of the enzyme for the substrate? Um, probably stays the same. So that's what it appears like, but it's a little bit more complicated. And once again, we can just explain this with a bit of basic chemistry that when I add the inhibitor to the solution, what happens to the concentration of the enzyme substrate complex? Uh, does it decrease? It, yes, it decreases because it's being used up to form this enzyme substrate inhibitor complex. Okay. So if we look at this reaction and the concentration of product is decreasing, does this reaction shift to the left or does it shift to the right? Um, if, this, if the ES decreases, then it'll shift to the right now. That's correct. And does that imply that you have more binding or less binding? More binding. More binding. And does that suggest an increase or decrease in the affinity? More binding would be an increase in the affinity, but a decrease in KM? Yes, you're absolutely correct. So our KM here actually decreases. And do you understand okay. why? Mm hmm Okay. So the, the way for you to think about it is, what the inhibitor is doing is it is locking the enzyme onto the substrate. Gotcha. Okay. So now we want to do the same thing as before and go ahead and consider the Vmax, which we know from this diagram is just looking at extremely high substrate concentrations and how the Vmax is affected. So in this case, what do you think happens to the Vmax? Um, I don't know, does it get bigger? So in this case, if we look at the inhibitor, I mean, inhibitors in general, do you think they're gonna make the reaction go faster or slower? Probably slower. Probably slower. So uh, you could be thinking slower, but we also saw in the last case that it might potentially stay the same. So if we want to consider what's going to happen, once again, just look at this reaction. If you dump a whole bunch of substrate, we know that's gonna give you a whole bunch of enzyme substrate complex. And by right. forming a bunch of enzyme substrate complex, is that somehow overcoming our inhibitor? Um, I don't think so. No, because the enzyme substrate complex is exactly what the inhibitor wants to bind to. So right. the inhibitor is still able to function at high substrate concentrations. And if anything, it's actually able to function even better at high substrate concentrations. So in this situation, there's no way for us to overcome the inhibitor with high substrate concentrations. So the Vmax does decrease. Okay. And if we want to go ahead and draw this out on the graph, we'd end up with a graph that looks something like this, where you can see the Vmax is decreased. And if you look for the KM, you'll see that the KM with the inhibitor is lower with the inhibitor than without. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we've discussed two different types of inhibitors. The competitive inhibitor can only bind to the enzyme and the uncompetitive inhibitor can only bind to the enzyme substrate complex. So our next inhibitor is the mixed inhibitor. And if you had to guess, what do you think this inhibitor can bind to? Uh, the enzyme or the enzyme substrate complex. Absolutely, hence the idea of mixed. So when it binds, to either, you form either the enzyme inhibitor complex or the enzyme substrate inhibitor complex. And in both cases, you have an issue because it can't react. So the next question then is, 
where on the enzyme do you think this inhibitor binds? Um, an allosteric site. So you're absolutely correct. It's the allosteric site. And it's actually a little tricky because a lot of students would think, oh, if you can bind the enzyme or the enzyme substrate complex, why can't you bind to both the active site and the allosteric site? And that's not how mixed inhibitors work. They bind to one site. And we know that that site can't be the active site because the inhibitor can bind to the enzyme substrate complex where the active site has already been occupied. So it does indeed have to bind to the allosteric site. Okay, so now let's think about how this affects the KM. Um, but before we actually discuss this, I do want to mention we've discussed two different inhibitors now that combine to the allosteric site, the uncompetitive inhibitor and the mixed inhibitor. But the un uncompetitive inhibitor can only bind to the enzyme substrate complex, whereas the mixed inhibitor can bind to both the enzyme and the enzyme substrate complex. So do you have any idea how we can explain this difference? I don't. So the way to think about it is when an enzyme binds to a substrate, there are two models you've learned about in biology to explain how the binding works. One model we know is incorrect, and one model we know is correct, or at least our current prevailing model. And do you happen to recall what those models are? I think it's, I think it's the lock and key model, and maybe like the inducible fit. Yes, you're absolutely correct. So the lock and key model is the one that is wrong, which basically says that the enzyme and substrate, you know, just perfectly match each other. Uh, whereas the induced fit model states that when the en enzyme binds to its substrate, there is a conformational change that essentially makes the binding even more, uh, even more tight. So the idea is that when you have that induced fit, it can change the shape of the enzyme. And in the case of the uncompetitive inhibitor, the allosteric site was not available to binding before that induced fit has occurred. So the induced fit effectively made that allosteric site available to binding. With the mixed inhibitor, there is a change in conformation, but it just wasn't so significant that the allosteric site became available only after binding or wasn't available afterwards. It was available in both cases. However, that being said, just because the inhibitor can bind to both the enzyme and the enzyme substrate complex, it doesn't mean that the inhibitor has to have equal affinity for both the enzyme and the enzyme substrate complex. So we can actually have two situations. So one situation is if the inhibitor has a greater affinity for the enzyme, well, is that more like competitive inhibition or is that more like uncompetitive inhibition? Um, competitive inhibition? That's correct. In that case, what do you think was going to happen to the KM? Um, the KM would get bigger because the affinity has gone down. Mm -hmm. That's correct. So it's more like competitive. So KM goes up. Whereas if the inhibitor has a greater affinity for the enzyme substrate complex, it's more like uncompetitive inhibition. So what would happen to the KM? It would decrease. That's correct. So what we can see with mixed inhibitors is it's actually more complicated because your inhibitor could have different affinities for the enzyme and enzyme substrate complex. So when it comes down to determining what happens to the KM, it's actually a question mark. We don't know. And you'd have to be given more information about whatever specific enzyme you're looking at to know what happens to the KM. Okay. okay. But that being said, we can talk about the michaelis menten saturation curve, which we know this is what it looks like without inhibitor. Uh, but for the VMAX, when you add the mixed inhibitor, remember VMAX, uh, is determined at extremely high substrate concentrations. Can a ton of substrate overcome this inhibitor? Um, I don't know. If you add a lot of substrate, you'd have a lot of enzyme substrate complex, which would help the inhibitor that binds to the enzyme substrate complex, right? But can you completely overcome the inhibitor? Um, no, because some of it still binds to the enzyme. 
Mm -hmm. So, well, so not, not to the enzyme, but if you had a bunch of substrate, you've got a bunch of enzyme substrate complex, but the inhibitor right. can still bind. It can still slow down the reaction, right? Yeah. So VMAX does decrease for sure. The KM is variable, but this for sure decreases. So okay. we can't actually draw a graph because one skin depends on the KM, but at least we can say the VMAX is lower. Okay. So does that make sense in terms of the three types of inhibitors that there are? Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. And you can see there's really only three types of inhibitors because you either bind the enzyme or the enzyme substrate complex or both, right? Just looking at the reaction, there's really no other way for you to put together another type of inhibition. So then we do have that other type of inhibition, non-competitive inhibition. So what exactly is this? And as you can probably tell from the way I've labeled this, it's not a type of inhibition. It's a subtype of mixed inhibition. So remember we said that in mixed inhibition, you can have an inhibitor that has a greater affinity with, for the enzyme or the enzyme substrate complex. Non-competitive inhibitors are mixed inhibitors with equal affinities for the enzyme and the enzyme substrate complex. So okay. in this case, what do you think is going to happen to the KM? It would stay the same, maybe? Exactly, because the increase from the enzyme and decrease from the enzyme substrate complex effectively cancel out. So this stays the same. And since we've discussed that the inhibitor binds an allosteric site for mixed, still allosteric site. And the VMAX also has to decrease because once again, it is mixed. So looking at the graph, we can draw the one with no inhibitors, which we know we're going to have a certain KM. And what's interesting is that when we draw the graph for with an inhibitor, you can actually see that with the inhibitor, we end up with the same KM. So this doesn't affect the affinity of the enzyme for the substrate, but it does decrease the reaction rate. Okay. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. All right. So do you have any questions about the differences between the different inhibitors? No, I think I get it. Thanks. Okay. So let's go ahead and spend the last five minutes having you teach this back to me. So on this slide uh, right here, I have a little table. So do you want to go ahead and walk through this table for me and kind of fill in, you know, what you think are these terms? And I, of course, can go ahead and write this in for you and just okay. to see how well you understood everything we've just discussed. Okay, I'll try my best here. Um, so we discussed that a competitive inhibitor is one that um, actually binds to the active site of an enzyme. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, it, the enzyme's affinity for the substrate goes down, which means your KM increases because they're inversely proportional. Um, and your VMAX, I think, stays the same just because if you add a lot, a lot of substrate, it can overcome the effects of the inhibitor. Mm -hmm. We got there. The uncompetitive inhibitor binds to an allosteric site. Um, because it's binding to the enzyme substrate complex. Um, I think that the KM goes down here. Mm -hmm. um, and then the VMAX also decreases in this case. Mm -hmm. And you recall the KM decreases because the uncompetitive inhibitor is locking the enzyme onto the substrate. Okay, so the affinity is actually increasing, which is why mm -hmm. your KM decreases. Yes. Um, a mixed inhibitor also binds to the allosteric site. So it binds to either the enzyme or the enzyme substrate complex. Um, we talked about the KM for this one is variable just because it depends on the affinity that the inhibitor has. Mm -hmm. uh, but the VMAX definitely decreases in this case. Mm -hmm. And then non-competitive was the weird fourth one that also binds to the allosteric site because it's a type of mixed inhibitor. Um, and we talked about that the KM would stay the same just because you've got an equal affinity for the enzyme and the enzyme substrate complex. And in this case, the VMAX also goes down. Mm -hmm. Great job. You're absolutely correct. And uh, you can see here on the next slide, I basically had all the answers and everything you described was absolutely correct. So very nicely done.